Shaktism Sanskrit, Sakta, lit. Doctrine of Energy, Power, the Goddess, is a major tradition of Hinduism, wherein the metaphysical reality is considered metaphorically feminine Adi Parashakti as supreme. It includes a variety of goddesses, all considered aspects of the same supreme goddess. Shaktism has different sub-traditions, ranging from those focused on gracious Gauri to fierce Kali, and some Shakti sub-traditions associate their goddess with Shiva or Brahma or Vishnu. The Sruti and Smriti texts of Hinduism are an important historical framework of the Shaktism tradition. In addition, it reveres the texts Devi Mahatmaya, the Devi Bhagavata Purana, and Shakta Upanishads such as the Devi Upanishad. The Devi Mahatmaya in particular, is considered in Shaktism to be as important as the Bhagavad Gita. Shaktism is known for its various sub-traditions of Tantra, as well as a galaxy of goddesses with respective systems. It consists of the Vidyapitha and Kulamarga. The pantheon of goddesses in Shaktism grew after the decline of Buddhism in India, wherein Hindu and Buddhist goddesses were combined to form the Mahadya, a list of ten goddesses. The most common aspects of Devi found in Shaktism include Durga, Kali, Amba, Saraswati, Lakshmi, Parvati and Triparasundari. The goddess-focused tradition is particularly popular in West Bengal, Odisha, Assam, Tripura, Kumon, Mathila North Bihar and Nepal and the neighboring regions, which it celebrates through festivals such as the Durga Puja. Shaktism's ideas have influenced Vaishnavism and Shaivism traditions, with the goddess considered the Shakti of Vishnu and Shiva respectively, and revered prominently in numerous Hindu temples and festivals. <inaudible> <inaudible> Origins and history One of the earliest evidence of reverence for the feminine aspect of God in Hinduism appears in Chapter 10.125 of the Rig Veda, also called the Devi Suktam hymn. Devi Sukta, Rigveda 10.125.3-10.125.8 The Vedic literature reveres various goddesses, but far less frequently than gods Indra, Agni and Soma. Yet, they are declared equivalent aspects of gender-neutral Brahman, of Prajapati and Purusha. The goddesses often mentioned in the Vedic layers of text include the Ushas dawn, vak speech, wisdom, Sarasvati as river, Prithivi earth, Niriti annihilator, Shraddha faith, confidence. Goddesses such as Uma appear in the Upanishads as another aspect of Brahman and the knower of ultimate knowledge, such as in section 3 and 4 of the ancient Kena Upanishad. Hymns to goddesses are in the ancient Hindu epic Mahabharata, particularly in the later 100 to 300 CE added Harivamsa section of it. The archaeological and textual evidence implies, states Thomas Coburn, that the goddess had become as much a part of the Hindu tradition as god by about the 3rd or 4th century. The literature on Shakti theology grew in ancient India, climaxing in one of the most important texts of Shaktism called the Devi Mahatmaya. This text, states C. Mackenzie Brown, a professor of religion, is both a culmination of centuries of Indian ideas about the divine feminine, as well as a foundation for the literature and spirituality focused on the feminine transcendence in centuries that followed. The Devi Mahatmaya is not the earliest literary fragment attesting to the existence of devotion to a goddess figure, states Thomas B. Coburn, a professor of religious studies, but, "...it is surely the earliest in which the object of worship is conceptualized as goddess, with a capital G." Other important texts of Shaktism include the Shakta Upanishads, as well as Shakta-oriented Upa-Puranic literature such as the Devi Purana and Kalika Purana, the Lalita Sahasranama from the Brahmanda Purana. The Tripura Upanishad is historically the most complete introduction to Shakta Tantrism, distilling into its 16 verses almost every important topic in Shakta Tantra tradition. Along with the Tripura Upanishad, the Triparatapini Upanishad has attracted scholarly basya commentary in the second half of second millennium, such as by Bhaskaraya, and by Ramanand. These texts link the Shakti Tantra tradition as a Vedic attribute, however this link has been contested by scholars. Theology Shaktas conceive the goddess as the supreme, ultimate, eternal reality of all existence, or same as the Brahman concept of Hinduism. She is considered to be simultaneously the source of all creation, its embodiment and the energy that animates and governs it, and that into which everything will ultimately dissolve. According to V. R. Ramachandra Dikshatar, a professor of Indian history, in Shaktism theology. 
Brahman is static Shakti and Shakti is dynamic Brahman. Shaktism views the Devi as the source, essence and substance of everything in creation. Its texts such as the Devi Bhagavata Purana states, I am manifest divinity, unmanifest divinity, and transcendent divinity. I am Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, as well as Saraswati, Lakshmi and Parvati. I am the sun and I am the stars, and I am also the moon. I am all animals and birds, and I am the outcast as well, and the thief. I am the low person of dreadful deeds, and the great person of excellent deeds. I am female, I am male in the form of Shiva. Shaktism's focus on the divine feminine does not imply a rejection of masculine. It rejects male-female, soul-body, transcendent immanent dualism, considering nature as divine. Devi is considered to be the cosmos itself, she is the embodiment of energy, matter and soul, the motivating force behind all action and existence in the material universe. Yet in Shaktism, states C. Mackenzie Brown, the masculine and the feminine are aspects of the divine, transcendent reality. In Hindu iconography, the cosmic dynamic of masculine-feminine interdependence and equivalence, is expressed in the half-Shakti, half-Shiva deity known as Ardhanari. The philosophical premises in many Shakta texts, states June McDaniel, a professor of religious studies, is syncretism of Samkhya and Advaita Vedanta schools of Hindu philosophy, called Shaktadavitavada literally, the path of non-dualistic Shakti. Devi Gita The seventh book of the Devi Bhagavata Purana presents the theology of Shaktism. This book is called Devi Gita, or the Song of the Goddess. The goddess explains she is the Brahman that created the world, asserting the Advaita premise that spiritual liberation occurs when one fully comprehends the identity of one's soul and the Brahman. This knowledge, asserts the goddess, comes from detaching self from the world and meditating on one's own soul. The Devi Gita, like the Bhagavad Gita, is a condensed philosophical treatise. It presents the divine female as a powerful and compassionate creator, pervader and protector of the universe. She is presented in the opening chapter of the Devi Gita as the benign and beautiful world mother, called Bhuvaneshvari literally, ruler of the universe. Thereafter, the text presents its theological and philosophical teachings. The Devi Gita describes the Devi or goddess as universal, cosmic energy, resident within each individual. It thus weaves in the terminology of Samkhya school of Hindu philosophy. The text is suffused with Advaita Vedanta ideas, wherein non-duality is emphasized, all dualities are declared as incorrect, and interconnected oneness of all living beings soul with Brahman is held as the liberating knowledge. However, adds Tracy Pinchman, a professor of religious studies and Hinduism, Devi Gita incorporates tantric ideas giving the Devi a form and motherly character rather than the gender-neutral concept of Adi Shankara's Advaita Vedanta. Tantra Sub-traditions of Shaktism include Tantra which refers to techniques, practices and ritual grammar involving mantra, yantra, nyasa, mudra and certain elements of traditional kundalini yoga, typically practiced under the guidance of a qualified guru after due initiation and oral instruction to supplement various written sources. There has been a historic debate between Shakta theologians on whether its tantric practices are Vedic or non-Vedic. The roots of Shakta tantrism are unclear, probably ancient and independent of the Vedic tradition of Hinduism. The interaction between Vedic and Tantric traditions trace back to at least the 6th century, and the surge in Tantra tradition developments during the late medieval period, states Geoffrey Samuel, were a means to confront and cope with Islamic invasions and political instability in and after 14th century CE. <laughs> Principal deities Shaktas approach the Devi in many forms, however, they are all considered to be but diverse aspects of the one supreme goddess. The primary Devi form worshipped by a Shakta devotee is his or her Ishta Devi, that is a personally selected Devi. The selection of this deity can depend on many factors, such as family tradition, regional practice, guru lineage, and personal resonance. Some forms of the goddess are widely known in the Hindu world. 
The common goddesses of Shaktism, popular in the Hindu thought at least by about mid-first millennium CE, include Parvati, Durga, Kali, Amba, Triparasundari, Lakshmi and her avatars such as Radha, Sita, and Saraswati. The rarer forms of Devi found among Tantric Shakta are the Mahaidyas, particularly Tara, Bhairavi, Chinnamasta, Kamala and Bhuvaneshwari. Other major goddess groups include the Sapta Matrika, seven little mothers, who are the energies of different major gods, and described as assisting the great Shakta Devi in her fight with demons, and the 64 yoginis. Tantric traditions Vidyapitha The Vidyapitha is subdivided into Vamatantras, Yamalatantras, and Saktitantras. Kulamarga The Kulamarga preserves some of the distinctive features of the Kapalika tradition, from which it is derived. It is subdivided into four subcategories of texts based on the goddesses Kulasvari, Kubjika, Kali and Triparasundari respectively. The Trika texts are closely related to the Kulasvari texts and can be considered as part of the Kulamarga. Worship <inaudible> 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 Shaktism encompasses a nearly endless variety of beliefs and practices, from animism to philosophical speculation of the highest order, that seek to access the Shakti divine energy or power that is believed to be the Devi's nature and form. Its two largest and most visible schools are the Srikula family of Shri, strongest in South India, and the Kalakula family of Kali, which prevails in northern and eastern India. Srikula, family of Shri The Srikula family of Shri tradition Sampradaya focuses worship on Devi in the form of the goddess Lalita Tripura Sundari, who is regarded as the great goddess Mahadevi. Rooted in 1st millennium Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh and Kashmir Valley, Srikula became a force in South India no later than the 7th century, and is today the prevalent form of Shaktism practiced in South Indian regions such as Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Tamil areas of Sri Lanka. The Srikula's best known school is Shridhya, one of Shakta Tantrism's most influential and theologically sophisticated movements. Its central symbol, the Sri Chakra, is probably the most famous visual image in all of Hindu Tantric tradition. Its literature and practice is perhaps more systematic than that of any other Shakta sect. Shridhya largely views the goddess as benign Samawa and beautiful Sandarya". In contrast to Kalakula's focus on terrifying Ugra and horrifying Gora", goddess forms such as Kali or Durga. In Srikula practice, moreover, every aspect of the goddess, whether malignant or gentle, is identified with Lalita. Srikula adepts most often worship Lalita using the abstract Sri Chakra Yantra, which is regarded as her subtle form. The Sri Chakra can be visually rendered either as a two dimensional diagram, whether drawn temporarily as part of the worship ritual, or permanently engraved in metal, or in the three dimensional, pyramidal form known as the Sri Meru. It is not uncommon to find a Sri Chakra or Sri Meru installed in South Indian temples, because, as modern practitioners assert, there is no disputing that this is the highest form of Devi and that some of the practice can be done openly. But what you see in the temples is not the Sri Chakra worship you see when it is done privately. The Shridhya Paramparas can be further broadly subdivided into two streams, the Kala a Vamamarga practice and the Samaya a Dakshinamarga practice. The Kala or Kaulachara first appeared as a coherent ritual system in the 8th century in central India, and its most revered theorist is the 18th century philosopher Bhaskaraya, widely considered the best exponent of Shakta philosophy. The Samaya or Samayacharya finds its roots in the work of the 16th century commentator Lakshmidara, and is fiercely puritanical in its attempts to reform tantric practice in ways that bring it in line with high caste Brahmanical norms. Many Samaya practitioners explicitly deny being either Shakta or Tantric, though scholars argue that their cult remains technically both. The Samaya Kala division marks, "...an old dispute within Hindu Tantrism," 
and one that is vigorously debated to this day. Topic: <laughs> Calicula, family of Cali. The Calicula family of Cali form of Shaktism is most dominant in Nepal, northern and eastern India, and is most widely prevalent in West Bengal, Assam, Bihar and Odisha, as well as parts of Maharashtra, Bangladesh and some parts of Kerala. Calicula lineages focus upon the Devi as the source of wisdom and liberation They generally stand in opposition to the Brahmanic tradition, which they view as overly conservative and denying the experiential part of religion." The main deities of Kalakula are Kali, Khandi, Parvati and Durga. Other goddesses that enjoy veneration are Tara and all the other Mahadiyas as well as regional goddesses such as Manasa, the snake goddess, and Sitala, the smallpox goddess, all of them, again, considered aspects of the Divine Mother. In Nepal, Devi is mainly worshipped as Kali, Bhawani, Matrika, and Navadurga. There are many Shakti Peeth in Nepal, including the main Shakti Peeth Guyeshwari Temple of Guyeshwari Devi, also called as Guakali Bhagawati, on the bank of Holy Bhagmati River. She is one of the important deity in Kalakula. Two major centers of Shaktism in West Bengal are Kalahat in Calcutta and Tarapith in Burbham district. In Calcutta, emphasis is on devotion bhakti to the goddess as Kali. She is the loving mother who protects her children and whose fierceness guards them. She is outwardly frightening, with dark skin, pointed teeth, and a necklace of skulls, but inwardly beautiful. She can guarantee a good rebirth or great religious insight, and her worship is often communal, especially at festivals, such as Kali Puja and Durga Puja. Worship may involve contemplation of the devotee's union with or love of the goddess, visualization of her form, chanting of her mantras, prayer before her image or yantra, and giving of offerings. At Tarapith, Devi's manifestation is Tara, she who saves, or Ugratara. Fierce Tara is ascendant, as the goddess who gives liberation. The forms of sadhana performed here are more yogic and tantric than devotional, and they often involve sitting alone at the cremation ground, surrounded by ash and bone. There are shamanic elements associated with the Tarapith tradition, including conquest of the goddess, exorcism, trance, and control of spirits. The philosophical and devotional underpinning of all such ritual, however, remains a pervasive vision of the Devi as supreme, absolute divinity. As expressed by the 19th century Saint Ramakrishna, one of the most influential figures in modern Bengali Shaktism, Kali is none other than Brahman. That which is called Brahman is really Kali. She is the primal energy. When that energy remains inactive, I call it Brahman, and when it creates, preserves, or destroys, I call it Shakti or Kali. What you call Brahman I call Kali. Brahman and Kali are not different. They are like fire and its power to burn, if one thinks of fire one must think of its power to burn. If one recognizes Kali one must also recognize Brahman, again, if one recognizes Brahman one must recognize Kali. Brahman and its power are identical. It is Brahman whom I address as Shakti or Kali. Topic. Festivals. Shaktas celebrate most major Hindu festivals, as well as a huge variety of local, temple or deity-specific observances. A few of the more important events are listed below. <inaudible> Navratri The most important Shakta festival is Navratri lit. Festival of Nine Nights, also known as Sharad Navratri because it falls during the Hindu month of Sharad October, November. This is the festival that worships the Navadurgas, forms of Parvati. This festival, often taken together with the following tenth day, known as Dushara or Vijayadashami, celebrates the goddess Durga's victory over a series of powerful demons described in the Devi Mahatmaya. In Bengal, the last four days of Navaratri are called Durga Puja, and mark one episode in particular, Durga's iconic slaying of Mahishasura lit. The Buffalo Demon. While Hindus of all denominations celebrate the Autumn Navratri festival, Shaktas also celebrate two additional Navratris, one in the spring and one in the summer. The spring festival is known as Vasanta Navaratri or Kshetra Navatri, and celebrated in the Hindu month of Kshetra March, April. 
Shridhya lineages dedicate this festival to Devi's form as the goddess Lalita. The summer festival is called Ashada Navaratri, as it is held during the Hindu month of Ashada June, July. The Vaishno Devi temple in Jammu, with Vaishno Devi considered an aspect of Durga, celebrates Navaratri. Ashada Navaratri, on the other hand, is considered particularly auspicious for devotees of the boar-headed goddess Varahi, one of the seven matrikas named in the Devi Mahatmaya. Topic Vasant Panchami Fifth day of Magha Gupta Navratri is very important for all branches of Shakta Pantha. Especially in Vindhyakal Mahashakti Pitham, thousands of Chandipatha and other secret rituals performed this day to please Adishakti. This is the festival of union of Shakti and Shiv, Shiva Shiv. On the same basis Shiva Shiv Samo is formed by a Wadut Kripanadnath at a Wadut Ashram, Vindhyakal in 1980. Diwali and others Lakshmi Puja is a part of Durga Puja celebrations by Shaktas, where Lakshmi symbolizes the goddess of abundance and autumn harvest. Lakshmi's biggest festival, however, is Diwali or Deepavali, the festival of lights, a major Hindu holiday celebrated across India and in Nepal as Tihar. In North India, Diwali marks the beginning of the traditional New Year, and is held on the night of the new moon in the Hindu month of Kartik usually October or November. Shaktas and many non celebrate it as another Lakshmi Puja, placing small oil lamps outside their homes and praying for the goddess's blessings. Diwali coincides with the celebration of Kali Puja, popular in Bengal, and some Shakta traditions focus their worship on Devi as Parvati rather than Lakshmi. Jagadatri Puja is celebrated on the last four days of the Navaratis, following Kali Puja. It is very similar to Durga Puja in its details and observance, and is especially popular in Bengal and some other parts of eastern India. Gauri Puja is performed on the fifth day after Ganesh Chaturthi, during Ganesha Puja in western India, to celebrate the arrival of Gauri, mother of Ganesha where she brings her son back home. Major Shakta temple festivals are Meenakshi Kalyanam and Ambabachi Mela. The Meenakshi Kalyanam is a part of the Chitharai Thiruvija festival in Madurai around April, May, one of the largest festivals in South India, celebrating the wedding of goddess Meenakshi Parvati and Shiva. The festival is one where both the Vaishnava and Shaiva communities join the celebrations, because Vishnu gives away his sister Parvati in marriage to Shiva. Ambabachi Mela or Ameti is a celebration of the menstruation of the goddess, by hundreds of thousands of devotees, in a festival held in June, July during the monsoon season at Kamakya Temple, Guwahati, Assam. Here the Devi is worshipped in the form of a yoni-like stone, and the site is one of Shakta Pitha or pilgrimage sites in Shaktism. <laughs> Animal sacrifice Shaktism tradition practices animal sacrifice to revere goddesses such as Kali in many parts of India but particularly in the eastern states of India and Nepal. This is either an actual animal, or a vegetal or sweet dish substitute considered equivalent to the animal. In many cases, Shaktism devotees consider animal sacrifice distasteful, practice alternate means of expressing devotion while respecting the views of others in their tradition. In Nepal, West Bengal, Odisha, and Assam, animal sacrifices are performed at Shakti temples, particular to mark the legend of goddess Durga slaying the buffalo demon. This involves slaying of a goat, chicken, or a male water buffalo. This practice is rare among Hindus. Outside this region, in Bengal, animal sacrifice follows the guidelines in texts such as Mahanirvana Tantra are followed in selecting the animal, then a priest offers a prayer to the animal, then recites the Gayatri mantra in its ear before killing it. The meat of the sacrificed animal is then eaten by the Shakta devotee. In Nepal, animal sacrifice en masse occurs during the three day long Gautamai festival. In 2009 it was speculated that more than 250,000 animals were sacrificed during this event. In Odisha, during the Bali Jatra, Shaktism devotees sacrifice male goats to the goddess Samalaswari in her temple in Sambalpur, Orissa. The Rajput of Rajasthan worship their weapons and horses on Navratri, and formerly offered a sacrifice of a goat to a goddess revered as Kuldevi, a practice that continues in some places. The ritual requires slaying of the animal with a single stroke. In the past this ritual was considered a rite of passage into manhood and readiness as a warrior. The ritual is directed by a priest. 
The Kuldevi among these Rajput communities is a warrior Padavrata guardian goddess, with local legends tracing reverence for her during Rajput Muslim wars. Animal sacrifice of a buffalo or goat, particularly during smallpox epidemics, has been practiced in parts of South India. The sacrificed animal is dedicated to a goddess, and is probably related to the myth of goddess Kali in Andhra Pradesh, but in Karnataka, the typical goddess is Ranuka. According to Alf Hiltbeitel, a professor of religions, history and human sciences, these ritual animal sacrifices, with some differences, mirrors goddess-related ritual animal sacrifice found in Gilgamesh epic and in texts of Egyptian, Minoan and Greek sources. In the 19th century through the early 20th century, Indian laborers were shipped by the British Empire into colonial mining and plantations operations in the Indian Ocean and the Caribbean regions. These included significant number of Shakta devotees. While instances of Shakta animal sacrifice during Kali Puja in the Caribbean islands were recorded between 1850s to 1920s, these were relatively uncommon when compared to other rituals such as temple prayers, community dancing and fire walking. <laughs> Shaktism versus other Hindu traditions Shaktism has at times been dismissed as a superstitious, black magic infested practice that hardly qualifies as a true religion at all. A representative criticism of this sort issued from an Indian scholar in the 1920s The Tantras are the Bible of Shaktism, identifying all force with the female principle in nature and teaching an undue adoration of the wives of Shiva and Vishnu to the neglect of their male counterparts. It is certain that a vast number of the inhabitants of India are guided in their daily life by tantric Sikh teaching, and are in bondage to the gross superstitions inculcated in these writings. And indeed it can scarcely be doubted that Shaktism as Hinduism arrived at its worst and most corrupt stage of development. The tantra practices are secretive, subject to speculations and criticism. Scholars variously attribute such criticism to ignorance, misunderstanding or sectarian bias on the part of some observers, as well as unscrupulous practices by some shaktas. These are some of the reasons many Hindus question the relevance and historicity of Tantra to their tradition. Beyond Tantra, the shakta sub-traditions subscribe to various philosophies, are similar in some aspects and differ in others. These traditions compare with Shaivism, Shaktism and Smartism as follows. Topic. Demography There is no census data available on demographic history or trends for Shaktism or other traditions within Hinduism. Estimates vary on the relative number of adherents in Shaktism compared to other traditions of Hinduism. According to a 2010 estimate by Johnson & Grimm, the Shaktism tradition is the smaller group with about 30 million or 3.2% of Hindus. In contrast, Galvin Flood states that Shaivism and Shaktism traditions are difficult to separate, as many Shaiva Hindus revere the goddess Shakti regularly. The denominations of Hinduism, states Julius Lipner, are unlike those found in major religions of the world, because Hindu denominations are fuzzy with individuals revering gods and goddesses henotheistically, with many Shaiva and Vaishnava adherents recognizing Shri, Lakshmi, Parvati, Saraswati and other aspects of the goddess Devi. Similarly, Shakta Hindus revere Shiva and goddesses such as Parvati such as Durga, Radha, Sita and others and Saraswati important in Shaiva and Vaishnava traditions. <laughs> Temples and influence Shakta temples are found all over South Asia. Many towns, villages and geographic landmarks are named for various forms of the Devi. Major pilgrimage sites of Shaktism are called Shakti Pithas, literally, seats of the Devi. These vary from 4 to 51. Some Shakta temples are also found in Southeast Asia, the Americas, Europe, Australia, and elsewhere. Examples in the United States include the Kali Mandir in Laguna Beach, California, and Sri Rajarajaswari Pitam, a Shridhya temple in rural Rush, New York. Some feminists and participants in New Age spirituality who are attracted to goddess worship suggest Shaktism as a symbol of wholeness and healing, associated especially with repressed female power and sexuality, however, these are adaptions and do not share Shakta theology. <inaudible> <inaudible> Buddhism 
There has been a significant sharing of ideas, ritual grammar and concepts between Tantric Buddhism Vajrayana tradition found in Nepal and Tibet and the Tantric Shakta tradition of Hinduism. Both movements cherish female deities, view the female creativity as the power behind the universe, and the feminine as the ontological primary. According to Miranda Shaw, the confluence of Buddhism and Shaktism is such that Tantric Buddhism could properly be called Shakta Buddhism. The Buddhist Aurangabad caves about 100 km from the Ajanta Caves, dated to the 6th to 7th century CE, show Buddhist matrikas mother goddesses of Shaktism next to the Buddha. Other goddesses in these caves include Durga. The goddess iconography in these Buddhist caves is close, but not identical to the Hindu Shakta tradition. The Seven goddess mothers are found in other Buddhist caves and literature, such as their discussion in the Buddhist text Manjushrimulakalpa and Vairakanabhisambodhi. Topic: <laughs> Jainism. In Jainism, ideas similar to Shaktism tradition are found, such as the Vidyadevas and the Shasanadevas. Topic. Sikhism The secondary scripture of Sikhs, Dasam Granth attributed to Guru Gobind Singh, includes numerous sections on Shakta goddesses, particularly Khandi, the fierce warrior form of the Hindu goddess. According to Nikki Guninder Kaur Singh, a professor of religious studies, the stories about goddess Durga in the Dasam Granth are reworkings of ancient Shakti mythologies. A significant part of this Sikh scripture is based on the teachings in the Shakta text Devi Mahatmaya found in the Markandeya Purana of Hinduism. Other ancient religions Some Westerners believe that many central concepts of Shaktism, including aspects of Kundalini Yoga as well as goddess worship, were once common to the Hindu, Chaldean, Greek and Roman civilizations", but were largely superseded in the West, as well as the Near and Middle East, with the rise of the Abrahamic religions. Of these four great ancient civilizations, working knowledge of the inner forces of enlightenment has survived on a mass scale only in India. Only in India has the inner tradition of the goddess endured. This is the reason the teachings of India are so precious. They offer us a glimpse of what our own ancient wisdom must have been. The Indians have preserved our lost heritage. Today it is up to us to locate and restore the tradition of the living goddess. We would do well to begin our search in India, where for not one moment in all of human history have the children of the living goddess forgotten their divine mother. See also Hecate, the Greek goddess of magic, ghosts, and necromancy Paldan Lamo, the fierce Buddhist guardian goddess found in Tibet, and the goddess of war in Mongolia Shaivism Smarta tradition Tridevi Vaishnavism Hindu sects Barbello Notes <laughs>